Okay, here we are, segment three of this configuring of signals. And yes, this time we will actually start configuring signals. I have wiped out, believe it or not, I wiped out the logic for the signals that you saw in the previous videos. Heavy sadness was abounding. <laughs> There's um, no configuration in there now. But we're going to go through this time and start the configuration process. Specifically, we're going to look at masked signal aspects. So there's rules, and there's going to be certain rules that create certain aspects. And the aspects are really the illumination of certain lights on the, um, on the signal. So we're going to look at that, and uh, let's go over to the computer and learn more about it. Okay, here we are. First thing I'm going to do is open up my worksheets. Okay, so what am I talking about here? We could go directly into the CDI and start configuring things, but I'm going to advise that we take some time and document where we want to go with this. I showed last time that we have this sheet here, basically a crib sheet that shows the different aspects of, uh, of our signal. So what we're going to do is do a worksheet. This is a worksheet that I've set up that basically is a masked rules worksheet. It lets you think independently of actually in the CDI how you want to set up each signal's indication set. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So to do this, I'm going to leave this as a template and I'll walk you through it. So I'm going to move or copy this thing. We're going to copy it. I'm going to put it right ahead of the signal aspect. And then what we're going to do is start working through this and figure out what we want to do. Okay, so again, starting from the top here, um, what is the signal node ID? I'm going to go ahead and just open that up. Under LCC, configure nodes. So I am looking at 100109. All right, so let's just go ahead and put that in. Configure node. 10.01.09. Okay, so that's going to be the, the actual more important part of this number. These pretty much change, stay the same for everything. Control point signal description. Well, let's go down here. Here's a pretty little picture of our layout that we have right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this turnout number one because my layout is so big on this demo layout. And so as we talked about in the last uh, session, this will be signal two and it's westbound. I'm going to call this one signal to signal four westbound. We'll just do it that way. And uh, let's see, we're going to call this signal to eastbound A and signal to eastbound B so that we know which head is what. Okay. Previous signal and next signal, we'll do that some other time. We're not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to be configuring S2W, right? So control point description is S2W, and I'm going to call that um, westbound home signal, okay? Signal mass and signal heads, we'll find that out. I don't know right off the hand where I had wired that. We're just going to go through the worksheet before we even go on the layout. Now, before I fill out this part right here, I'm going to go walk through um, some of these different designations down here. Okay. First of all, the available rule names. This is a copy out of the documentation put out by RR Circuits. It's basically, they have available 31 different rule names. Oh my goodness, right? And of those, I'm just going to use the ones that are in boxes. I, I don't know if I'd even use this many, to be honest. Um, that's more than enough for uh, my layout, and frankly, if I used even this many, most of my operators are going to be confused <laughs> anyway. So um, it's just for you know how how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go, right? And then associated with each signal is the available track speed. Again, there's a total of eight different options here. I'm going to limit it down to really there's only three that are going to be valid, and so. Uh, I, I, either the signals to stop at a, the speed of stop or a slow speed or a clear speed. That's it. That's all I really care about. Now we can go further down that, but just for demonstration purposes, that's what we're going to do today. All right. All right. So that's that piece right there. And then over here, I've got a little terminology convention uh, just simply to annotate some of this so it makes sense to the average person. 
you know, yellow, green, red, and then flashing yellow, flashing green, flashing red. And I'll use that to designate these different aspects. Now I know this is a pretty simple signal. We're going to do this S2W here, but that's, um, you know, three whole light bulbs. And I know that sounds really simple, but let's just walk through it. If we do a simple one first, I think it'll make a whole lot more sense later on. So rule names. First one I always like to do is stop. Stop is the most restrictive. It should be the first set of logic you put together. Whatever it takes to stop a train is highest priority, so it's generally the first rule you want to you wanna use. So the aspect will be red. It's simply going to be a red light, and the track speed will be, of course, stop. Now the event stuff, we'll fill that in later as we get into this, and we'll use this later as well. Second one is approach. You can spell it, which is the yellow indication, which is the approach. And then finally, clear, which is green, is clear for track speed as well. Proceed, all the same. I'm going to do one more here, and this came at the advice of Ken Cameron. Uh, he's a fairly active uh, member of the LCC community as well as uh, General Model Railroad Electronics. And what he likes to do is a logic alert uh, indication. In my case, I like to just make them all on, red, yellow, green. We're going to turn them all on, and the track speed will be stopped. Why is that? Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm going to include a logic block that will turn on all the lights. And what that does is tells me that the logic ran all the way through all the different conditionals, and it never got triggered. And so it ended up hitting this last logic and it turned on all the lights. Error. Uh, it's a good way to debug Error. things. If you know that Examine. they're all on, you know that something is wrong in the preceding logic, that it didn't derail it to either red, yellow, or green. Makes sense? So we're going to go ahead and configure that as well. All right, well, with this, now we can take this and actually apply it to a real live signal. So let's go back to the CDI. Um, where did I put that? Here it is. We're going to open that up, open the configuration dialog. Should look pretty familiar to you while it's loading. I'm going to slide this little puppy over, and then we'll bring this guy over here so you can see what we're doing here. So go ahead and open up on this uh, Rule to Aspect tab. you got mast 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm up to 8 masts. And all of them generally are set as unused. So if we go through all these, you can see that they're all unused at this time. This is pretty much how you'll see your CDI show up when you first get it. Now I have configured all the ports, now all the I.O. from the previous videos, that's all live still. We're not going to worry about conditionals at this time, we're just simply going to set up the rules to the aspects. So the first thing, we're going to do mast 1, right, and we're going to turn it on. Now it's normal. The mast description, what did we call this? Signal to W. Write that. Track circuit link address. We'll use that later on. Okay, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, cool. Open this up just a little bit. Lamp fade. Um, this field here lets you select whether the light just dim, you know, comes on dim as if it's incandescent and then shuts off and kind of has a dimming out. Um, or, you know, you can just have it like an LED light, just is on or off. It's, it's, you know, it's on or off. It's as simple as it is. So I like the incandescent, call me old-fashioned, but it kind of looks cool to me. Down here, oh, look at this. How cool is this? So here's all your different rules. Um, so rule one, well, there you go. We're just going to start filling in it. Well, it's already defaulted to stop. Isn't that nice? Track speed, look at that. We already got it. Now the event to set this is put right here. So what I'm going to do is copy it, and then we'll put this right in here. And now we have that as a reference. And I know that sounds, why are we doing this, Detlef? But this is going to be helpful later on for us just to have it for debugging, all right? I don't really use this. Um, once this aspect is set, you can track it through these signals here. Um, but we're not going to use that. All right, the next section here, individual lamp aspects. Lamp 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can have up to four lamps on at any time. It doesn't have to be on the same signal head. These could be four lamps in any area. and. Uh, but we're only going to use one, right? Because it's lamp one and it's just one head and we only got one red light for this. Okay, so when I wired this, it was head four, H4 on the signal LCC that I wired to this particular signal. So here we go, lamp one, 
I'm going to go down to head four, uh -huh. red. Now, if I write all this, save all these changes, um, it's configured now. So whenever, whenever this, where is it? This event shows up, 0901A8, when that shows up, this red light will turn on now. Now we do the same for the rest of them. Okay, rule two, we decided is going to be, scroll, 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 approach, um, track speed will be approach. There's our number, cotton, and I'm going to paste it in here. And then um, down here, individual lamp one is going to be head for yellow. I'm going to save all of them down here. And finally, okay, no, it's actually not finally. Um, we're going to have to do rule three, which is clear. All the way at the end, track speed will be clear proceed. Here's the event. And, as you can guess, it'll be head four green. And I'm going to write all those. And finally, we will do this um, rule four, which um, I just decided, because I'm not using it for anything else, stop orders. It could be anything, you know. I just picked something that I wasn't using elsewhere. An approach, it'll be stop. It should never have to execute. I'm not sure I even need to copy this down. I suppose I can just for completeness. Um, and then we pop it in here. There we go. And then uh, lamp selection. So lamp one, check this out. I'm just going to have some fun with this. I'm going to do H4 red. And I might as well make it flash. And then lamp two is going to be H4 yellow. And you know what, for lamp three, I'm going to make it H4 green, but I'm going to use the opposite phase, medium. See how that, I was kind of fast there. So you can have an A phase and a B phase. So A will be on when B is off, and vice versa, B will be on when A is off. So I did one of the lamps on the A phase and one of the lamps on the B phase. So you're going to see these two lights cycling back and forth. Very obvious that something is not right. So save all these changes. Finally, I go back to my worksheet back here, and we basically said that this is going to be head four and red, and this will be four. To be honest, most of the time I just do this with pencil. It goes a whole lot faster. All right, so pretty ugly, but it's there. So now I've got this record, and there you go. You've just configured your first signal. Now, if I wanted to, I could manually issue um, any of these um, events, and it would actually follow along. But we'll do that some other time. All right, that's enough for this. Um, I'll go ahead and do a separate video for configuring a multi-head one, but it's basically the same thing, so it'll be a pretty short video. Anyway, talk to you next time. See you. Take care now. Bye-bye then.